All right, we are introducing our first assignment, which is the fantasy landscape assignment. We'll start by doing a sketch in both a landscape format and a portrait format of that, of that setting, of that landscape. And then we will turn that into a composite of found images, at least five found images at high enough resolution to print. So how do we get started? Well, we can always look at the assignment sheet for just a written description of assignments. And we do that under modules within the Canvas course and assignment sheets. And each of these you can preview or you can just download. It's a one sheet document. You can print anywhere. It's just black and white. And you'll get the basic requirements. So the basic requirements are it needs to be big enough to print at least 8 by 10 by 300 PPI, but most of us are going to do more like 13 by 19 by 350. We want to have at least five references that blend together to form what is a believable landscape. Doesn't mean it needs to be photorealistic, but it means that the five images from different sources have to all work together. You know, it shouldn't look like a, a Frankenstein landscape. It should work within its own logic, its own physics. And lots of different tips here that we'll, we can go through. But these are the requirements you need to meet. And then this is how an assignment is scored. If you turn nothing in by the, by the deadline, and the deadline is in your course outline, we'll have more than one day to work on this, uh, you, can, you get a zero on it, and you can't resubmit it for more points. If you turn anything in by the deadline, even if it doesn't meet the requirements, you'll get at least one point, and then you can resubmit with improvements for a whole new grade. So remember this system. And then once something is just the best it can be, and it's more art than technical exercise, it's a portfolio piece that you're proud of, those are the pieces that get you the full three points. All right. So looking at past student examples can help us understand. Some people sketch more uh, in a more detailed way than others. But all of these sketches, whether they're digital or hand done in your sketchbook, are informed by first finding reference. So this is how I start it. And I'm going to sketch digitally here. But you would just do this in your sketchbook. Take an empty page. You can definitely use lab hours to do this, or just work at home. You don't need even Photoshop to do this. You just need a web browser. Maybe turn it on its side if you want. It's up to you. All right. And this is what we do. You're going to write, what kind of landscape do I want? What should I do this semester? I want to do something with caves and maybe some ruins and maybe forests. I haven't done forests in this class. So that's some uh, attributes to the landscape. Then I want to think when and where. Is this in another universe? So I might put like galaxy far, far away. <laughs> or I could do on Earth, but on Earth in the 13th century, you know, early, early Renaissance, very late medieval, or in the future. So I have my ideas. I want you just to write that. That's your general description of the setting. And we are only designing a landscape, a setting, nothing living. We will populate it later. Then with that in mind, we go to an image browser. We go to Google Images. I'm going to look for a cave forest landscape. And just like we did with, these are all really cool, but just like we did with um, our cartoon jumble, we have to make sure they're high enough resolution to use. So I want to go to size larger than 10 megapixels.
and then anything that kind of looks interesting I think that's a beautiful one there I think I might have had a student use that in the past The trick is to be showing a cave and a forest. I don't want all just inside cave stuff. But I want to suggest that this forest has hidden caves. So I am right clicking and opening a lot of links in new tabs. And then I'll, I'll do some other searches. But so far, I don't really have a great sense of, of having all the references I need yet. Right? And your ideas should change based on the references you find. They should sharpen and become more uh, specific as, as you are challenged. All right, so I've opened up a lot of different tabs. Now what I would do is build a folder of landscape references. So I just have that off to the side. Now I'm going to go through those just like I did with the cartoon jumble. I have far more than five. I'm going to check the resolution. This one's a little bit blurry, but a very nice high resolution. Some dramatic light. And I'm going to swoop them into my folder. That's a beautiful photo. That's going to be a useful one. And I start collecting this stuff. And this is just the cave element. Now I want to maybe look for more forest. I like the rifts in the forest floor there. And some of them aren't going to work. That's OK. That's pretty blurry. Though it can be used in the background pretty effectively. So we gather up our images, and we use them to inform our sketch. So this is how I do it. You can do it your own way. I open up my folder. I make the icons nice and big. So I can see them kind of all in one place like so. And then just in my sketchbook, remember this doesn't need to be in Photoshop, even though that's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to sketch a composition of them. So this should only take a few minutes. And I want you to challenge yourself to sketch two compositions, both a vertical composition, which is taller than it is wide, and a horizontal composition. And this is vital to making it your own piece. So there's certain references I really like. I really love this waterfall. So I'm going to put that in this corner here. And so that's number one, waterfall. And then what do I want coming from that? Well, I want that to somehow overlap with these trees here. So I'm going to have big rock and trees. So that's number two. Just got a couple minutes here until the end of the class. What does that taper into? Well, then I get into these big trees in the background. So that's my third reference. It's like a jigsaw puzzle that you're planning. And now what comes in front of them? Well, the big trees have this big gash, which I really like, which will lead into, I want this to be on this side, like there's a big cavern dropping up out from underneath. So that's my fourth reference. And then what fills in in front of that big crack? 
I have this foreground element of moss and roots, and that might come through all the way. So moss and roots. And that's five, and that's good enough to get started. I can do the same thing here. I can put the moss and roots here. That's my fifth element. The tree's coming off like that. I want the waterfall behind that here. So that's my number one element. I want um, to have this far background. So this is a new element. So I'll call this six. And that's just greenery. And then over here, I would use the big trees. Though I don't have the tops, tops of them. So that's number three. So one, two, three, four. And then what's going to fill up here? That's where the gash is. I would need to find something else for here that I would go search for <laughs> that I would like. So I did that very quickly, but then that's what you need along with reference images to pull from to start putting this project together next class. So have fun exploring, doing a lot of image searches. Remember to always search with that limit of 10 megapixels or bigger. Think of the lighting conditions. Think of where these images might overlap. So I have cave forest. But I can also look for some of these other traits, like ruins. I haven't put any ruins in yet. So maybe forest, because I know I need that around it. Ruins. What do we get? Larger than 10 megapixels. And I can find some interesting things I can add in. Open them in a new tab and go from there. All right. So that's what we are preparing for next time. Good luck.